What is going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 7th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that did very well today and that I see potential in over the next couple of days. So for all you guys out there that do enjoy the videos, that do find value in in these videos feel free to smash that like button it really does help the channel grow and i really do appreciate all you guys out there for watching these videos subscribing to the channel and of course smashing that like button so like you guys read in the title of today's video, we finally got that red day that we were waiting for. It started off being pretty bloody of a day, right? It was a pretty bloody day to begin the day and heading off into the middle of the day. Then we ended up closing the day, you know, on a nice little upswing, which often does happen whenever we start off the day very red. But to get into the details here, the SPX also known as the S&P 500, the 500 largest U.S. traded companies, was down around 25 points, down around 0.94% at the close. The Dow Jones was down around 220 points, down around 0.87% at the close. And the NASDAQ here, guys, got hit the hardest, down around 1.25%, down around $87.75 at the close about 16 minutes ago from the time that I'm recording this video. So let's talk about the SPX very quickly before we do hop into these under other indices here and before we do talk about what I traded today. And for all you guys out there that did watch my video yesterday, I was talking about this resistance on the one year, one day chart for the SPX. And the video yesterday was titled, is the S&P 500 getting rejected? And this is what I was talking about in yesterday's video. And it ended up getting rejected today even further with this red day that we had. So go check out yesterday's video if you haven't watched that one already. But pretty much, guys, I was talking about how, you know, we saw the SPX forming a little red candlestick right under the 180 SMA here on the one year one day chart talking about how this was a potential resistance spot right we were talking about the death cross here the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA we were talking about the RSI being extremely overbought and we were talking about this red candlestick right here forming towards the close of the market yesterday right under the 180 SMA so there was a couple of different um you know indicators letting us know that we could potentially be getting rejected you know, right here. And of course, like we saw today, guys, you know, the SPX was down around 1.4, 1.3% at its lowest. We closed that around 0.9%. We officially did get rejected, you know, by that uh, resistance. So, you know, just because we got rejected by that resistance, guys, that doesn't mean that we broke the downtrending pattern quite yet. Because if we take a look a little bit closer here on some of the closer time frame charts, this one being the 90 day two hour, we can see, you know, it's looking like the SPX is continuing that uptrend pattern towards the end of the market. Remember, remember like I said, you know, we ended up opening the day pretty red. It got pretty bloody heading into the middle of the day. And then we start to see a bit of an upswing towards the middle of the day. And what did that upswing do? Well, that upswing held above that 180 SMA, or was it the 50 SMA? The 50 SMA on this 90 day, two hour chart. So technically guys, you know, the SPX is still uptrending, although it did get rejected on that larger term time frame chart that one year one day which is why i always tell you guys and i do this myself look at a many 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 different time frames look at all the time frames if you have to when you're doing your technical analysis because we could be getting rejected on the one year one day which could signal okay we're downtrending, but if we're looking at some different time frames here, like the 90 day, we're going to see, okay, we're not quite yet downtrending. We're still holding this, you know, support on the uptrend, 
you know, on the smaller time frame, you know, chart. And it really does give us, it, it just gives us different stories when we take a look at different time frames. And it just gives us a better understanding, right, of, you know, what's going on, you know, in the overall stock index, you know, ETF, future, whatever you're doing your analysis on. So why I deleted that? Well, just to show you guys that it's still holding that uptrend of higher highs, higher lows. And again, heading into the close, guys, we do see some green candlesticks forming on top of that 50 SMA, which could indicate, guys, you know, we could be headed back up in terms of the SPX um, tomorrow, right? And that's not, you know, what a lot of people want to see. A lot of people want to see more red to come, you know, including myself here. I'm kind of bearish on the markets, but, you know, right now we could potentially, um, you know, push back up based on these technicals. But of course, it's always good. It's always wise to keep an eye on the futures, large cap stocks, pre-market hours to see whether or not we are breaking this resistance or are we heading or support rather, or are we bouncing above it and heading back up so we can get a better idea of what we're going to going to be trading for that particular day. So guys, you know, based on these technicals, we could be headed back up tomorrow. But again, you know, stock trading is not all technicals. There are, you know, some news, some fundamentals that do affect what we end up trading. So if there's some news that comes out tomorrow that pushes stocks lower, you know, if we break that technical barrier tomorrow, that support, you know, we could be headed back down for even more red in terms of the SPX. But this pullback, it really did bring the, uh, the uh, RSI level down a bit to a reasonable spot at around 50 uh, points right here. So honestly, we could be going either way tomorrow, guys. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you personally think about this. Are we going to continue to sell off? Are we going to be holding this 50 SMA here on the 90-day chart to continue the uptrend who knows, guys? What do you personally think? I personally think, you know, judging off these technicals, that we could be headed back up tomorrow, right? But I could be wrong. You know, once we see these futures, once we see, you know, these large caps pre-market hours, we'll get a better understanding, a better idea of, you know, where we're going to be headed tomorrow. So, uh, let's talk about the Dow. Very similar here with the SPX, guys. You know, we're holding that 50 SMA here on the 90-day two-hour chart. Really still holding that uptrend of higher highs, higher lows in terms of the Dow Jones. On the one-year, one-day, we talked about how yesterday that we already saw... This one break above the 180 SMA. This was not really a resistance because, like I just said, we broke above it. But now we're seeing a pullback and potentially seeing the 180 SMA acting as a support level right now, you know, for the Dow Jones on this one year, one day chart. On the 180 day chart here, we do see a nice pullback from that resistance from a couple of weeks back at around 25,500. We're pulling back here to around 25,100. Right now with a strong green candlestick, you know, towards the end of the day, because like I said, guys, you know, typically not always, but typically when we do have a strong red day to begin the day, we do see something like this happen, meaning that we do see a bottoming out point, maybe towards the middle of the day, maybe towards like, you know, four or five hours into the market. And then we start to see some recovery heading into the close. You know, this happens all the time. You know, I would say about like 70% of the time when we sell off heavily, you know, in the beginning of the day, we end up seeing this, right? You know, this pretty much happens a lot, guys. And, you know, the fact that it did happen that's holding it above uh, this 50 SMA that we just talked about. And really, you know, it could continue this pattern, guys, if we do end up, uh, you know, having a strong push in some large cap Dow stocks tomorrow, which could end up happening based on this technical analysis of the Dow. But remember, guys, it's not always about technicals. Some fundamentals do play a role here in terms of short term trading. Don't just judge all your, uh, you know, all your trades, all your picks for stock trading, day trading, swing trading just off technicals you have to you know dig into the news dig into the company sometimes to get a better understanding and of course during earnings season right you got to be aware of what companies are reporting earnings because if you're just blindly trading stocks let's say you were trading ea sports for example right or ea it's not ea sports ea arts what am i saying ea uh you know the comp this company right ea let's say you were trading this one um you know right here without knowing that there was earnings the next day, right? Let's say you were just blindly trading stocks, you know, trading this stock in particular, not knowing there was earnings, you would have got crushed because this one went down 
17%. So all you guys that are beginners out there, you know, keep an eye on what stocks you're trading and understand what is going on with that stock, right? Is there a big buyback? Is there an earnings report? Did they get their guidance cut? You know, you got to understand these different things because they do play a role in short-term trading, especially guys. So, you know, the Dow guys, very similar to what the SPX is looking like. It's holding that uptrend. And uh, really what we want to see in both the SPX and the Dow for the continuation of the downtrend is a break of this 50 SMA. That would be a very, very good sign for more red to come. So the NASDAQ today, guys, got hit the hardest because tech stocks in general did very poorly today, right? We saw Apple down about $3. Facebook finally got that solid, solid pullback that we were waiting for today. And in general, guys, it's looking like the NASDAQ is holding that uh, support in this channel that we were talking about in the previous couple of videos, right? Remember I was talking about, about how the NASDAQ was trading between 6,600 and 6,800, this channel right here? Well, it broke out of that channel. It, it was looking like we were trading in this channel for the previous couple of days after we were consolidating on it as a new support and once we popped up. And now with the pullback, it's looking like we're right at that support again. So tomorrow, keep an eye on this 90-day to our chart. Keep an eye on whether or not we're going to break the support, break the 180 SMA and head to the downside, or are we going to hold this and continue to push up and trade within this channel yet again, guys? But it, let's say tomorrow, let's say we break back into like, you know, the 68, $6,700 range, which is a pretty big stretch there because that isn't a hundred point loss. But let's say we start to push back down, you know, and test you know, maybe the 6850, 6830 level, that's going to be a good sign that we're heading down, we're breaking out of this channel right here, and we could potentially break the 180 SMA, which has been a support over the past couple of weeks, which would be a good sign of the continuation or the start, rather, of a downtrend in the NASDAQ. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of this closer term chart here on the NASDAQ. On an even closer term chart, we can see you know, with this pullback today, we are holding that 180 SMA as a support. And again, we want to see the break here for the continuation of that downtrend and always take a look at multiple charts, guys. I can't stress that enough. And if we're taking a look at this one year, one day, like the SPX, not like the Dow, right? This one also got rejected by the 180 SMA here today. And that is a very good sign, guys, that we could potentially see some more red to come, especially with this, um, you know, 50 SMA cross to the downside, you know, which does indicate some bearish sentiment in a stock ETF index future, whatever we're trading. It could indicate some more downside to come. So like I said, guys, you know, Facebook, Apple, they all did pretty poorly today. Apple down around 2%. Facebook was down around 2.5%. You know, Google was down a decent amount today, 1.5%. You know, Microsoft was down around 1% today. And this pretty much weighted down the NASDAQ over the other indices that we do see here. So, um, you know, that's what it's looking like in terms of the overall uh, markets, solid red day today, but the major indices, guys, they are still holding their uptrends right now, and we want to see those critical resistance breaks for more red to come, and uh, or support breaks, rather. We want to see them break those supports for, for more red to come, and that's what I'm honestly waiting for over these next couple of days. So what did I personally trade today, guys? Well, we saw there was a big red day today, so guess what I traded, guys? I traded TVIX, and I'm sure all you guys probably already guessed that. I typically trade this every single day that I see red potential for that day, and today was one of those days, guys. You know, we saw the indices, right? They were red for a pretty good chunk of the day, opening up a pretty solid day for TVIX. And I traded this one after this first big pullback that we saw from around $38 all the way down to around $36. You know, I waited, you know, at this point, guys, we, we popped up pretty quickly in the morning. This was when the SPX was uh, first starting to sell off pretty aggressively here. And then we saw some buying power, some push up in terms of the SPX. And then once this was getting more overbought on the RSI, and we started to see it approaching this uh, resistance here, I wanted to see 
whether or not we were going to start selling off more. And this honestly just opened up a good, uh, you know, profit margin, good opportunity in TVIX. Because remember, guys, whenever the SPX is pushing up, that's when TVIX is going down in price, you know, becoming more oversold and really just having more margin of profit open to it, right? So we saw that. And then we saw, you know, the pushback up here in uh, the SPX opening up that margin, like I just said. So I wanted to wait until TVIX found its bottom before starting to build a position here, guys. And how I waited to see that was... A, we wanted to see it find the low of the day, which was around $36.92. And the next thing I wanted to see was it to make a higher low from that spot. Because let's say we pushed up here, got rejected, and started to push back down and potentially broke below this for a lower low. You know, that's not going to be a good entry spot. That's not going to be what I want to see in a stock ETF index future before entering it. What I want to see is I want to see it push up pull back and make a higher low, which it did right here at around 37.20. And this is exactly when I, when I ended up building my position right around $37.40 is when I started to add my position in TVIX, put a little bit more here at around $37. And I believe 70 cents is when I started to put more. And then that's when I ended up putting my, uh, my limit order on TVIX at about 2% and pretty much got my 2% profit on TVIX for the day, right? And we saw I probably could have made a ton more money, honestly, if I got in, you know, right around, let's say my average cost is right around here, 2%. You know, I got out at around $38 roughly, right? I could have made 10%, eh, maybe like 8% on my position if I did end up holding it. But for all you guys that know me, my trading style, that have been following me for a while now, you know I'm more conservative, right? You know I don't like to grab, you know, I don't like to chase huge profits, right? I like to keep it consistent, conservative, because with my experience, guys, trading, you know, not going for the home run trades all the time, not trying to get 10, 20% on every single trade. This has led to me being more successful in my experience, especially with consistency, which is what I really like, um, you know, which is what I really like to work on in terms of trading, right? Because I don't like to have, you know, a very good day one day, the next day I do crap, the next day I do crap, and then I try to hit a penny stock home run trade, get 20% back, you know, I don't really like doing that, right? I like to keep it very small, very consistent, and risk manage, guys. I like to risk manage with stop losses. Sometimes mental stop losses, right? Meaning like you're watching the stock actively. If it goes below a certain price, you cut losses automatically. That's some. That's sometimes what I do. Other times, you know, when I'm swing trading, I like to set concrete stop losses, right? Which is, you know, putting it in the think or swim or whatever platform you're using, you know, setting that order stop loss, you know, that will trigger your, uh, you know, you cutting your losses at a particular spot. You know, there's many ways that you can do this, you know, mental stop losses. I would say they're more for, uh, you know, advanced people that have discipline, right? Because a lot of people would just be looking at it and, and they're like, no, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. And then they end up losing like 10%, right? So with a mental stop loss, you got to really have that discipline to cut those losses, you know, while you're actively watching the stock at a particular price that you know that you're disciplined enough to cut at, right? So that's pretty much the idea there and what I did today in terms of uh, TVIX. And now I have a couple tickers here on my phone that I do want to talk about. And the first one, guys, I know you're going to laugh at this one, is Chipotle, guys, Chipotle, ticker symbol CMG. And we have a joke in the Discord group chat that I pump up Chipotle stock because, uh, you know, I eat Chipotle a lot. And hey, maybe... Maybe I am pumping up the stock, right? Maybe I am pumping up the stock. But we saw they just reported their earnings yesterday, I believe, right? And I, I didn't really look too deep into their earnings because I'm not a shareholder of Chipotle. I'm really not interested in uh, becoming a shareholder. I just really like their food, to be completely honest. But I figured for the sake of this video, we'll talk about very briefly what they reported in terms of their earnings, and we'll take a look at the stock in terms of technicals, right? So here, Chipotle, guys, they had an extreme good earnings report clearly the stock reacted well to it it's up around 12% here 
at the close of the market. We saw EPS on Chipotle at $1.72 per share versus $1.37 expected by analysts. So pretty solid beat there. In terms of their revenue, guys, which again was a beat, they reported $1.23 billion in revenue versus $1.19 expected. And their same store sales growth, which is pretty impressive, was a 6.1% growth versus 4.49% growth expected. And if you look at, you know, Chipotle stock in the long run, it's been on a roller coaster ride, guys. We were talking about this earlier in the chat. You know, Chipotle stock back in 09 after the Great Recession was $36 a share. 10 years later, roughly, or like seven years later, it's nearly $800 per share back in 2015. And then for all you guys that have been paying attention to Chipotle stock, I have been over the past couple of years. They had some problems, including some recalls, you know, E. coli back, you know, three, four, five years ago. And the stock went from $750 all the way back down to $269. So it lost like 60, 70% of its value. And from there, you know, it's been doing very well over the past year. Now it's back almost to $600 dollars guys so let me know down below are any of you chipotle mexican grill shareholders i honestly don't know uh too many people that are shareholders of chipotle right if you're a shareholder drop a comment down below let me know you know you're doing pretty well right now if you did end up building a position uh two three years ago so that's what i wanted to talk about today guys pretty funny there that the uh, you know the joke in the chat that i pump up the stock that makes me laugh every time someone says that but um you know we obviously talked about tvix if we do end up selling off tomorrow even more if we do break those supports on those charts that we talked about in, in the beginning of this video tvix could do very very well tomorrow and we do notice it's at a support right now at around thirty five dollars you know that's a pretty good sign that uh you know tvix could be at a reversal spot right now so keep an eye on this one especially if it breaks the 50 sma tomorrow another one i wanted to talk about that did very well today was dgaz ticker symbol dgaz yet again another double digit percentage day for dgaz and this was really because natural gas is, which is the future it trades based upon, gap down from around 368 down to around 355. So it gapped down another 10 cents roughly, and that really just popped up uh, DGAS another 10%. So the fact that you know, we push to another lower low now in terms of natural gas. It's going to be really interesting to see. Are we going to continue this downtrend? Are we slowly going to start to push back up, get some more momentum to the upside in terms of natural gas, which would give you guys a very good opportunity, um, you know, for some profit? What do you guys think? Drop a comment down below. Me personally, I haven't honestly been trading you guys and D gas very, uh, you know, very much recently at all to be completely honest because they're kind of hard to predict right who knows tomorrow we can wake up and see it gapped up to 290 right we see these crazy things happen which is why i don't really like like holding etfs overnight at all especially the u gas d gas combo because i couldn't tell you how many times this has happened and we can see it just from the chart right take a look at all these gaps right here this is literally an overnight gap up so let's say for an example you were holding d gas here thinking it's going to sell off and it gapped up that's literally you losing 20 percent on your position in the snap of a finger just because it gapped up and this is something that happens all the time it gaps up it gaps down check this out it gapped down here these spaces are gaps guys right you can see you know a gap down here a gap down here it gapped up here, right? It happens all the time, which is why it's risky holding these overnight and why I really just day trade them. That's the complete truth, right? We can see, let's say you were holding you guys here for a potential pop. You would have got screwed because it gapped down from 317 to 290. You would have lost like 30% on your position if you were to hold overnight or over the weekend during this time, right? You know, that's why it's just very, very tricky. And, uh, you know, that's why I don't really swing trade these 
or hold them overnight. But tomorrow, guys, you know, if we do start to see a pushback up, maybe to the 50 SMA, maybe to 265 ish, you know, that could give us a good opportunity in you guys. And of course, if we continue the downtrend, D gas could be a good play tomorrow as well. So another ETF we saw did very well today was Drip. Ticker symbol DRIP. This one did very, very well today. Nearly 14% move today. And for all you guys that don't know, Drip trades based upon XOP. And XOP is an oil and gas based ETF. And pretty much how this works, guys, is whenever XOP is selling off, that's when Drip is going up in price. So the fact that we do see a double top here formation in um, XOP. It had very difficult time getting above around 30 to 31 dollars as at this resistance right and the fact that we're seeing it's breaking below the 180 sma now it made a lower low from the previous this could be the start of a very big sell-off in xop which could open up a massive margin of profit on drip over these next couple of weeks so i'm watching drip guys very closely and if this does continue to downtrend i do see a very good opportunity tomorrow in drip as a potential day trade but there's always a chance since it did gap down pretty big today that we do see some push back up tomorrow so in the short term i'm talking like one two days you know gush could be which is the inverse to drip gush could be a good recovery play before we do potentially end up selling off more in xop which obviously would make drip the better play there so some other stocks we saw downtrend or really just continue their downtrend and one that i was talking about in the previous couple of videos was atnt ticker symbol t this one went down to actually 28 dollars today i believe like 28.90 to be exact let's see yup 28.90 so i was actually talking about a potential put option on atnt uh you know a couple of videos ago due to this downtrend lower high pattern that pattern that it's on and the fact that it broke the 180 sma so let me know down below do you guys think atnt is going to continue to sell off that's an interesting one to look at, in my personal opinion. And uh, what are your thoughts? Let me know. And just to quickly talk about the marijuana stocks before we do end off this video, let's take a look at what they did today. Well, Cron, guys, it had a 10% day, right? I mean, this stock is just unbelievable. It goes up 10% one day, down 15% the next day. It's just unbelievable, right? So Cron is officially back in the uptrend, guys. Well, it really never broke the uptrend because it never broke this 50 SMA. And the fact that it held that 50 SMA now, you know, this does give me some opportunity or some thought rather that this could continue to push back up and maybe test 22 again, 23, and maybe even push back up to $24 with all the hype behind these, right? So Cron, guys, back in that uptrend with a strong 10% day-to-day. CGC, on the other hand, still downtrending. It broke that 50 SMA support yesterday, had trouble getting above it now as a new resistance level, had a decent day up around 1%. That's really honestly a bad day in terms of the marijuana stocks. If you're up only 1%, like that's crap compared to what Cron's been doing, right? So, you know, 1% in marijuana stocks, ah, uh, that's a bad day. That's a very, very like un unexciting day or uh, non-exciting, however you pronounce it, however you say that. But, uh, you know, excuse my grammar, guys. So what do you guys think? Do you think CGC and Cron do have potential to continue the uptrend or, you know, get back into some green territory over these next couple of days? I would love to know. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys ended up trading today. Thank you all for watching these videos. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on that notification bell if you want to be notified every time that I I do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.